What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Gut Check Project. We have a very special episode. In fact, we have a guest co-host. We are going to be doing something really cool. We're going to be talking about veterans, giving back to veterans, and trying some really good liquor. Because we have Mr. Rich Hagedorn of Soldier Valley Spirits. Now, just a brief bio on Rich. This is I've known Rich since we were kids. I admire him so much. He is just a a couple of the simple things that he's done that is amazing is he's a retired senior non-commissioned officer over 25 years of committed service and he is a member of the or you're always a member of the 101st airborne right yes like once you are you are he was a member of the 101st airborne and one of the first uh troops to go into the, to Iraq, right? Into Iraq. On the 24th of February at 0800, we were on our way. We had a rendezvous with destiny is what they called it. Uh, we were 148 miles southeast of Baghdad on the Euphrates River Valley. How about Oof. that? So he's got a lot of really great stories about that. We kept in touch the whole time and he is one of the only living Hall of Fame members of the Nebraska National Guard. In fact, well, I'm going to go on record and say the only living? No, no. The, well, the 209th RTI in, in, for the Nebraska National Guard, there's a Hall of Fame. And I love this. I told you, what was funny was you look at all these people, all the different pictures. Most of these people are dead. And I'm like, <laughs> my God. And then, so in 2014, I became part of the Hall of Fame. I'm honored. I'm honored. This is great. I did a great job. I, you know... I, I, I worked really hard to get to get to that uh, get to that honor, I guess. But yeah, most of the people on that wall are dead. Well, and one of the reasons why I'm honored to have him, although you know, thank you for your service and everything thank you've you, done. Ken. He has spent after his retirement, he has spent um, a ton of time helping disabled veterans. He has taken them on hunting trips, and he's a hunting guide, and has always been giving back. And he is co-owner of Soldier Valley Spirits, which is a liquor company that not only makes incredible bourbon, whiskey, vodka, but every time they sell a bottle, they give back to nonprofit organizations that help our veterans. Yes. And so you have essentially committed your life to helping other veterans. I remember my grandfather way back in the day. I remember going to a VFW, and he was a World War II veteran. And he said this to me as a young 14, 15 year old kid. He's like, you know, we owe everything to our veterans. Don't ever forget that. And if you, if you join the military or not, cause that's what I always want to do. You know, we were graduates of Westside high school. Ken, everybody else is going into college. And my deal was I want to be like Rambo or Colonel Troutman, you know, from Rambo. I want to go join the army. And that's what I, that's what I pursued. Uh, but my grandfather said, we said, we owe everything to our veterans. Um, we, if you ever have the chance to give back, this is back when I was, you know, 14, 15 years old. And these are things I never forgot is, is things like that. And giving back to veterans, if it's the hunting trips, which Ken and I, I mean, he's done a lot of hunting trips. We've done some fun things together way back in the, in the nineties, but some of these duck and goose hunting trips, the ice fishing, and that sounds crazy for Texas, but when we ice fish up there in the Dakotas, when I take these guys hunting or fishing, what it does is it takes their mind off PTSD. It takes their mind off Gardez, Afghanistan, Paktika province, when they were there and they have all this, God, I hate to say this, just bad stuff in their mind. I'll take them out. And I've heard this before. I've completely got everything off my mind. The hunting trip, the duck and goose, you remember me back in the day, all that stuff, the fishing. Thank you. What a great time I had with you. And then we get like Omaha steaks. They, they got the prime rib for us. Um, TSI Mechanical paid for all the gas and, and the hotel. So I get people to donate stuff. But for me, for my time to help out veterans, it's it's something great. So anybody out there, anyway, you can help out a veteran, uh, the, the feeling that you get, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. And you're somebody that actually saw real combat. You're somebody that actually went over there. I mean, you were, I was in, I was a freshman, sophomore in college when yes. this went down and you went all the way over there. Uh, we tried to help as much as we could. Why don't you, why don't you explain right. what that means? So <laughs> everybody, this is a neat story. So here we are, we're on the Kuwaiti border and got to remember the 101st Airborne Division, the 82nd Airborne Division, all these different divisions. Early on in uh, the Persian Gulf War, Desert Shield, Desert Storm, remember that back in 1990, 91, uh, we were outmatched like you wouldn't believe. There are 20 some Iraqi divisions above us and then there's only a few American divisions. But hey, you, guys, you guys literally were the 
the first. Oh yeah, but bring it on. Let's 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 do this. I, I dare you to go across this border and and bring your shit with you because we'll we'll take it on. So we were all excited about everything, but you know here we are on the border and and we would have you know, these areas that we'd set up in. And I was a mortarman. A mortarman in infantry is a an eighty one millimeter mortar. It's a large device, and you put a round through a tube. It hits a primer and shoots far, far away. We'll put it that way. <laughs> so I was a mortarman. So we had vehicles. So we're driving around in vehicles and everything. And then every once in a while we would get packages and I would see this package and I'd go, Oh, look, you know, from, from Ken Brown, Claudia Brown, your sister. And we get packages from people, but one package was great was we get this package and I open it up and there's these shampoo bottles and I open up the shampoo by like, do not put the shampoo on your hair. Dude, don't put that shampoo on your hair. What does that mean? So I open it up. I'm like, wow, that's Southern comfort. <laughs> so I'm like, and I shared it with everybody when these guys sent the stuff to the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which was illegal, by the way, but who cares? <laughs> you know, we they send stuff over. I'm sharing it with everybody. But with Ken's mother back in the day sending uh, beef jerky and Claudia and, and all the different things that you did when you'd send the stuff over to us, man, that miss made us, I mean, it feel, made us feel loved. And even today, after all these years of being done, I still have these army friends that bring up, man, you got some great friends back in Omaha and that Brown family and your, and your, and your friends that, that sent over that booze. Those guys are great. I'm and like, yeah, would, still friends with them. You know, we would, we would take uh, cassette tapes out like uh, dictation tapes. If we went out and that thing would just get passed around at parties and people would talk to you and you, you guys would listen. And I had no idea what was on them. We would just mail them. No, I'm like, I have no idea. And, what and, was and, and, and Ken, his friend, Ken's not driving, his friend's driving. They're driving around Blair, Nebraska in the middle of nowhere. And they're going to the, and the next party. And these at this party, there's some girls there. Well, and, we had a car full of people. I'll d- clarify here that we were going party to party but there was a designated driver there was a designated driver everybody's passing Ken wasn't driving this this cassette and, and they're, they're they're passing around and they're and they're like hey we love you guys thank you for what you're doing and this cassette tape we were getting just before we went into iraq so this is around the 20th of february 1991 we get this tape and i'm sitting with all this little cassette player we're sitting around a humvee and we're listening to these guys in Blair, Nebraska, these old friends, <laughs> and these friends of my army friends, which I love very much, they would get to know who these people are. And it was neat that they were go, oh my God, what's Ken gonna do next? And, we- <laughs> and it was, they're at a party and they're like, hey, this is my army buddy. He's, 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 he's gonna be going into Iraq soon and, and all this. And it was just neat to see all these people talk on there. And then there were girls, they were like, Rich, I can't wait to see you when you come back here to, to Blair. And I'm like, oh, my God, I can't wait to get the hell. I can't wait to see Ken. You, know? so you got you to gotta stay alive. You got to stay that. alive to get back to see Ken. So those, those stories are so funny. Oh, my God. That's great. If you're listening to this on uh, iTunes or Spotify or the usual, we've got uh, the table is set up with Soldier Valley Spirits liquor that we're going to get into and talk about that and rich has just an incredible storyteller he i'm not surprised that we're sitting here with some really high-end liquor because you actually have some liquor experience in your genes baked into the hagedorn german style tell me about your uh you, was it your grandfather is my talking? grandfather so him and his how about this for the jer- so my last name is hagedorn and my my mom's side of the family is salinitro sicilian so sicilian italian how about that for a combination my grandfather on the german side this is neat so i remember talking to my grandfather now he died in 89 i think he was he, he was born in 1904 died in, in it was born 1904, died in 1989. So I, I had older grandparents. and But I remember my grandfather saying to me, he's like, yeah, we used to make moonshine liquor, <laughs> you know, back in the day. And he'd talk about the- Back rat- during Prohibition? Yeah, so back in the 19, so about that 1920s time frame, they were sending booze to, they had another outside buyer. They would send it to, to Kansas City. They would send it to Chicago during Prohibition times. So they would have barrels that they would, they would receive somewhere and they would fill up these barrels and they would do corn whiskey, kind of like the whiskey that we have here. It's mostly a corn whiskey. So they would make moonshine liquor. I'll put it that way. That's how it said. And he would tell me about how they knew where the cops were at. And if the Omaha or Lincoln, this is in Nebraska now, if the Omaha or Lincoln cops, if they knew what we were doing, 
They would have closed the whole thing down and we would have gone to jail is what he would say. But he talked about the stills, the copper stills. He talked about how easy, and I'm not saying you should go out and you know make your own booze and everything, but it's not that tough. But it, you talk about how easy it was to distill spirits. And I was just amazed when you have, you know, I wish you could go back in time. I'm sure a lot of us could say this. You go back to time and you'd listen to your grandparents more about these stories. Because sometimes I was like, well, that's cool. Okay, goodbye. And then, you know, leave. I wish you could have, I could have spent more time listening to stories about this. But when he talked about making moonshine liquor, you know, back in the 1920s, 1930s, that's pretty, as a teenager, that's pretty cool. Isn't that great? And then moonshine the stuff to Omaha, then to Kansas City, to Chicago. You hear that and go, wow, that's, that's, that's incredible. Hey, I want to say something about that, about grandparents. Uh, The last episode that Eric and I did, we, that was our Croatia altruism business type episode we uh there was somebody that got up and they do these things called baby einsteins where they give like little you have three minutes to give sort of like life pro tips and somebody gave a really really good life pro tip right now we have the technology if you get uh you can actually and he said there was an app but or there's a way that google does it or something but you can have folders for saved uh voice messages but you know voicemail and what he's been doing is whenever he gets a, a family member, a grandparent, a parent says, I want to wish you a happy birthday. He saves them into oh, a folder. Wow. And then he says, whenever I get down, he's like, I'll just put that and play that on my way to work. And I'm hearing my grandmother that died five years ago, wishing me a happy birthday. He says, we should be doing the same thing with our Zooms. When you get on there, just record them, put them in a file. Someday you're going to want to show your kids or your grandkids. So the, that's a great the way you're talking about that. Yeah. You yeah. Know. Anyways, I didn't mean to interrupt, but yeah, I think that the hearing stories from our grandparents and stuff like that, uh, many of us have not had a chance to spend enough time with our grandparents due to disease, death, yep. location, whatever. And so the Knights of Columbus, the Catholic Knights yeah. of Columbus, you know what that is, right? The yes. Knights of Columbus. Yes, sir. So a funny story was, I love this one, and this talks about the Italian side of the family now. So my uncle, who's a Catholic priest, Father Carl Salnitro in Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, that's right. Uh, when, when, he, when he was young, a young, young kid, so he found a pistol, and he went down to my grandmother, right, my great-grandmother, and said, listen, I found this gun. What is this gun from? He's like, I found a gun. Oh my gosh, Nana, I found a gun. He, my Nana says, so that was your, that was your great, that was your grandfather's, my great grandfather. That was your, that was your grandfather. Well, why did he have a gun? Was he a policeman? He's like, uh, no, he was in the mafia, like that, <laughs> like this. And so my uncle, the priest, he wasn't a priest then, he was like five, six years old. He says, he goes, Nana, what's the mafia? He's like, oh, it's uh, like, kind of like the Knights of Columbus. <laughs> It's kind of a funny story. It's really not. You know, that's a whole different thing. But oh, slightly different. Slightly different. But that's some funny stuff. Your great grandfather was in the Sicilian mafia. Yeah, my great grandfather. So yeah, that's the judici side, the G U I D I C I judici. So they were yeah. So they were in the mafia when they came back from the old country. Uh, it was uh, just like the movies. It, it was a it was a police force for people that couldn't get protection from anybody else. They were there to help out other people to make sure that they were the Italians and their people were taken care of, and it cost money. To be protect, it, it costs money to do that. But yeah, the organized crime thing, it was on my mom's side of the family. And you hear all these stories and go, so I'm sure they had stuff to do with prohibition back in the day too, but this is all legal now. Uh, but yeah, just these stories you hear and you go, I can't believe it. Wow. Speaking of stories, so, and we're going to eventually get into this. Oh, well, yeah, we're going to do we're, some we're sampling. We're going to eventually talk about, you know, the great uh, stuff that Soldier Valley is doing, but I haven't seen you in a long time. I've been friends with this guy since we were kids. You've got some great stories. You were telling me, um, I mean, you've just over the years, you've traveled a lot. You've been a, um, a trainer for the military forever, yes. and they've sent you everywhere. Um, like, like you went to Germany and learned a little German. And do you know how to order a beer in Germany or anything like that? You know, when we, it was funny when we did that that, t- that time, and I'm sure there's some German people out there. I'm going to butcher this, but I remember being at the Halfbrow house, and they got all these huge things of beer, and these girls are smoking hot, and you're like, oh, my God, this is great. I love this place. And they're bringing the beers down, and then the lady comes up to us, and she speaks German right to us. And I'm like, ah, da ist es Weizen wird, bitte vielen Dank. And they're like, oh, you like to have two beers? Thank you very much. I'm like, uh, yeah. And so she, they wouldn't even speak 
you know, German back to us. And then they, they do that. And then one of the best stories was Honduras. In Soto Cano, Honduras, we, we, I spent four months there. I trained troops in, in Honduras. We go to Honduras and we had cervezas. We had beers and we had food like you wouldn't believe. Everything was top-notch, awesome. Honduras, it, it's dangerous, but it was a beautiful, beautiful place. And it was with the army. And we get the bill. And the bill is fourteen dollars, and I'm like, "What?" I was like, "Is that for me? Is that for Ken? Is that for you know? Is that, who's that for the guy over here? Who's no? It's for everybody." And I guess the calculation. So I gave him a twenty and a twenty for the tip. We were his best friends the rest of the time. I mean, he thought he won the lottery. The guy's like, oh, my God, thank And then a lot of people speak, you know, the, the broken English, and you've yeah. been to Argentina and all these places, and and and. But he was like, oh my gosh, but you know. To, to that uh, that amount of food and beer, we drank beer like it should have been a fifty dollar deal. But it's like I think it was it'll be fourteen dollars, and I'm like, because we wanted the conversion over. And then I'd say, the, how was your Spanish though? Oh my god, you know this, Ken. I mean, I didn't take, I didn't, I, I didn't pay attention. I, I should have paid attention. My mom didn't teach you when no. you help oh my. when you help move her. I, I know. <laughs> And that's a great, the best story is, and I would do anything for the Brown family, love them. Uh, Mrs. Brown calls and said, I'd like to have some, can you help me move, you know, from the old house? So I, I was thinking there was going to be maybe 20 or maybe 10, 15 people. For the record, like I'm not around. No, you're, town, you're, you're you know? working, you're doing your stuff, everything. But this I sound is, like a bad son on this no. one. No, <laughs> but I'm like, okay, well, you know, gosh, we're going to have some other people over and everything. And it was me. <laughs> He was just, <laughs> and Mom's like, I mailed you beef jerky 20 years ago. And I owe you. you know, I, so, no, I, she worked me like a rented mule. And, it's, it's, and, and they're beat, you know. So I'm doing but I loved it. I, Mrs. Brown, thank you. I, and you need help again, call me. But, my gosh, we worked hard on that deal. And I tried to find the cassette tape from a party that I we had a long time ago in high school. And I think you borrowed it or whatever. I was looking through. You guys had more cassette tapes? I mean, you guys had hundreds of cassette tapes. And so I'm looking through it to see if one of them that was That's mine. Right. I looked forever for that. And thing. I couldn't find it and everything. But, uh, and then going back, what was, there was a meat dish that your mom made in high school is Argentinian meat dish or what was the spices that she had? I forgot what it was, but, and then her pasta, I mean, those were some fun times back that in the day. Really good times. They had a big That's... table at their house and then we had all these friends over and your mom, and we were, we made stuff too, but those are good memories to have. And, and so I just, I brought mom in just not too long ago. She's 83 now. Wow. 82, 83, somewhere around there. Smart as a whip probably healthier now than she was 10 years ago, doing all the stuff that we talk about on the show all the time. She's, she, she'll do anything that we say. So we have her on the, have, have her on the products that we have. She follows the, you know, be social, do things. So she's a great example of longevity. She is fun to have. The kids know her. They, they love hanging out with her. When we were at Creighton Prep for that event, she gave me the biggest hug. Yeah. And I thought that was great. And I introduced to my wife, Joanna and everything, but, and she gave a bear hug to Joanna and I was just, it was, that was such a fun event. That was fun, but that was, that was for the, that was for Linda's a taxi event. We have a mutual friend that, that we actually support the Atrantil, uh, supports uh, Linda and her Nebraska Ataxia, helping people, once again, giving back, trying to help people that can't help themselves. That's kind of the key, That what what the theme of this whole business that you're We in. donated a bunch of bottles to that. It made me feel good. And she thanked me multiple times for that. I'm like, I'm all about you. So you know? so the Spanish wasn't so good. But, oh, God. But, but you were in, you actually went to Italy and trained some people. How was so your no, Italian there? The, the Italian, well, in Sharm el Sheikh in the Sinai Peninsula, uh, I would say things in Italian that were Sicilian dialect. And they said it's a very old language and kind of a language they don't use anymore. But it was so cool when I hung out with these guys. It'd be like going to Southern Louisiana when they're like talking Cajun <laughs> and stuff. It. So, you know. And so I said some stuff to these guys and they were laughing. What did, what did you say to them? Well, the best was the, the Zogno Amer Americano, mango sabanente, means an American, I'm an American, and I don't know nothing. They laughed their butts off. And there were other things I said. And, and then I, what did they ask you? What else do you know? And what did you say? Oh, I said something like, Indragazzo Caisi Frega, means the boy who plays himself. <laughs> and some other, <laughs> there, there, That's the there, other there, phrase that you no, knew? Yeah, the, boy point, that the boy that plays with himself. The boy who plays himself. In the, in the, uh, and I won't do the, the gesture, sorry. <laughs> I was, I was gonna, 
so I get in trouble. No, but and then I did the, the best was is um, we're at Mount Sinai. Great story. We're at Mount Sinai and there are people carrying up crosses and it's a very holy place. The Ten Commandments, Moses, all that. This is a very sacred, holy place. And I was was humbled. I, I thought this was really cool. We you start up the mountain and you get up there and it's about it's a four hour walk. At four a.m. you reach to the top of Mount Sinai. So I'm like, all right, this is cool. I'm wearing shorts right now, everybody, and I'm wearing at that time wearing shorts and a sweatshirt because it gets cold on top of Mount Sinai. So we get up there and I'm like, all right, cool. Wow, it's kind of cold up here. So there's a bunch of blankets. I grab the blanket. I thought they were free, you know. <laughs> I grab a blanket and I. I, I put around me myself like this. I'm like, all right. I said, what time is it? So I look at my watch. I'm like, okay, sunrise is at five, whatever it is. I'm like, okay, we'll wait here. So I put the blanket over my head. I'm an army guy, you know, I'm sitting there. Out of nowhere, a guy comes up, this this Egyptian guy with a stick and whoosh, hits me <laughs> on the corner of my neck with the stick. And I'm like, oh my God, what was that? You know, what, what happened? Like this, and I look at him and he goes, and I'm like, what, what, what are you doing? And he goes, you steal my blanket, you give me five euro. You steal my blanket, you give me five euro, my friend. And I'm like, yeah, I'll give you five bucks, whatever it takes, but don't hit me with a stick. So I'm reaching in my wallet to get, I'll give him five bucks, whatever. Whack, he hits me with the stick again. You'd probably done the same thing. I get up in front of this guy's face and I yell at him on Mount Sinai, right? <laughs> I'm yelling at him. A and holy I'm, place. I'm calling him every name that you wouldn't believe. And guess what? Everybody is hearing it. Names you can't say on this right here. I'm calling him every name. And he looks at me, Ken, and he says, American. <laughs> hey, I'm doing my best at goodwill and all that good stuff and everything. I'm like, yes, I can't even say what I said. I said, yes, American. I said, let me tell you what, I'll throw you off this, whatever. And I'm just, I'm, I'm on. So my buddy comes over and I'm not a big dude, whatever like that. I was well, lifting weights, whatever. But then he brought his friend over, another friend. I told him I was going to take them out too. And then my buddy, John Hageman comes over. He's in the Nebraska National Guard. We were training uh, leadership there in Sharma Sheikh. He comes over and goes, Rich, you need to calm down. I'm like, that guy hit me with a stick two times. and I'm going to launch him off this deal. I don't care. And so at the end of everything, here's the sunrise and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And I, I said prayers for all the people that we've known, everybody, and it was just beautiful, whatever. But I'm probably known at Mount Sinai for almost throwing some guy off the <laughs> off a cliff. I was so mad. Oh my gosh. But that Sharm El Sheikh Is there a picture of you there? Yeah. Like at the like like at the beginning. If you are this man, you cannot come. Oh, I bet so. Maybe, I don't know. That guy, I said some words on that mountain that, that everybody heard. Um, but you know, that's the, like, I mean, that's like a, like, that's like a direct line to God. Like he it heard is, it like right it, there. It is. I'm like, sorry. Like, like God just stopped and went, geez, what is who's, going on down who's there? Who's that guy? Jeez, he's got anger issues. <laughs> hey God, I got an uncle that's a priest, you know, but, <laughs> but yeah. It was, it was funny, but then the uh, scuba diving in Sharm El Sheikh, any scuba divers out there, the, the, the water, the clarity of the water, I mean, you could see, I forgot how many meters it was, but it was beautiful, and there was, there was sharks, and there was all this cool stuff, but Sharm El Sheikh is a huge place for Europeans to go to. That was cool. Uh, one great story, I love this one, was Korea. Korea was cool. All right. So Korea, I was in the Froka headquarters. The Froka headquarters is right in the middle of Korea. The Froka headquarters is a nuclear bomb proof shelter. And this shelter, it's pretty, pretty cool. In the shelter, it was a nuclear device, but it's where all of the different um, commands of what's going on for a war against North Korea come from. So this is a cool story. I'm almost done. This is a good one. So here I am. I, I'm looking around and they have these huge, gigantic screens and all the troop movements of a fake battle against North Korea. And so Wait we, a minute. It's a, you lost me there. So they have say that again. It's They've a got huge a bunker and they have these huge monitors, these big screens with troop movements of fake troop movements of, of if we did an invasion into North Korea, oh. what, what the war would actually look like with everything. And they would have all these towns. I mean, it's a big, big deal. Naval strikes and this and troops oh, and, and all of the, I mean, you're seeing everything. So you, just, you gotta remember guys, these are huge screens, gigantic screens. And I said, wow, 
I said, look, I gotta remember, I'm surrounded by a bunch of Koreans. This is a good story. I'm like, wow, this is really cool. I said, look at these Godzilla Trons I got going on here. <laughs> I said, Ken Brown, I said, Godzilla Tron. Is there anything wrong with that? I know where this Lieutenant Colonel of the Rock Army Republic of Korea comes up and he goes, we are not Japanese, we are Korean. <laughs> Like this, and I'm like, "What? I, what did you do?" What? He goes, "He goes, he goes. Godzilla is Japanese. We are Korean." And then the, the colonel next to me goes, "She's rich. She should maybe keep your mouth shut." And I'm like, <laughs> "We are Korean." Is that a bad? I, that was bad. Was that bad? I said it like that. That's exactly what he said. It. That's how he said it. But we all got to laugh at that. And later on, in the whole different thing, that same colonel came up to me and he says, "You know, we are not Japanese. We are Korean." We had a big laugh at it. So met some great people. Um, that Froka headquarters. I didn't see sunlight for, I want to say, twenty days. I was what? down. But, but every time I went in there early in the morning, and then when I went out at night, it was dark. So I went, it was dark when we went in. Dark when we went out. Um, one last one. This is a good military one. I did spend a couple days on the USS Nebraska off of Kings Bay, Georgia. So I was on the USS Nebraska nuclear powered submarine off of Kings Bay, Georgia in the Atlantic Ocean. And this was a few days prior to September 11th. September mm. 11th. So I was there as a special guest of Roger Lemke, who was a two star general in the Nebraska National Guard. Great, great guy. And we, we spent those days on that, on that sub and these guys, I mean, in the army, I mean, there's some smart people in the army, that naval, the Navy, naval officers, it's a whole different smartness. These guys are nuclear science. These guys were working on their masters to their doctorate degrees on, they call it a boat. It's a submarine, but on the boat, they call it a submarine. They're working on their master's degrees. They're working on their doctorate. These were brilliant people on board that ship. So, yeah, then a few days later, later September 11th happens. where We're on that USS Nebraska. There's 24 Trident II nuclear missiles on board. This is not classified. There's 24 Trident II n- nuclear missiles on the submarine. Yeah, I can see you start dropping some classified information no, on I this wouldn't podcast. Do that. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, each war, there's four to six warheads. Each warhead is, is 100 times the power of Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined. What? We'll strip the paint right off your house, give you a permanent orange afro. So, <laughs> so this is some serious deals. So they were doing a mock missile launch, flooding tubes one, 13, two, 14, and they're doing this whole missile launch. And when September 11th happened and George Bush was flying into off at Air Force Base, I thought there was a little bit more that day. A lot of people thought, well, you know, gosh, these buildings came down. I thought something else was going to happen. And there was something more to it because when George Bush flew into town, that was a scary, scary time. But the military is full of fun times. And there's, you got your stories and all the things, but in the military, I'm so glad I did it. I mean, the 25 years I put in, I think went pretty fast and it was fun. I mean, it was a really good time. I look back on it. Um, it was time to get out medical wise. Uh, I became a hundred percent service disabled veteran, uh, Sarah nerve agent, uh, really? with the VA is inside of me. Um, I have some, is that you know, contagious? Th- no, it's sure. not. Okay. So that's from the Gulf War. And then knees, ankles. But the VA, for medical-wise, the VA really, I, and there's a lot of guys out there who might disagree with me, but the VA in Omaha really takes good care of me. Yeah, they- I have a Dr. Aruni, who's the chief of cardiology at UNMC. Um, when I had, I, I, I tell this too i had a heart attack so they put a oh, they put a right. they put a stent in and you're a runner and you're in great oh, shape it, that it, was there's the no family thing. history and they're, they're saying it has a lot to do with military service Ooh. so but dr rooney i have her number if anything happens while i'm down here at dallas or something um it's great to have the va really take care of our veterans too that's a big deal i think that that is awesome and then of course you get out and do you you have a lot of stories where your where your mouth gets you in a little bit of trouble. I'm, oh, I'm seeing a trend all the, all the time. Is that? Do you think maybe that's why your potential movie or commercial career didn't take off? I I, I, I yeah. <laughs> didn't you do a commercial for a senator? Or so yeah, Don. <laughs> Everybody sent me that commercial. Yeah. Then. So Don Bacon, <laughs> Nebraska, great guy. And I don't know if anyone out there has done a commercial before. They gave me a script and they said, the lady goes, please memorize this and have this ready. We'll shoot in five minutes. I'm like, memorize that? I'm like, you guys give me a dead day. She gave this to me yesterday. You know, something. <laughs> so I'm memorizing all this. You're going through your lines. You're going through everything. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. I, I, I. And so next thing you know, action. 
And I got the first lines out. Everything was about a credit union. And, you know, and so I do this commercial and everything. And I had just, I had to watch my language and whatever. I, I'm trying <laughs> on my best behavior right now. But it was so cool to do that. And it was on TV all over the place. And it was cool because I kind of look like this guy, Don Bacon, congressman, whatever. It's, it's all cool. Um, no, I'm going to refer to the lighting. How you were impressed with the equipment that everybody had. Oh my God, can I say that? Yes, of course you can. So the guy that was taking the photography, he's got all these, you know, the umbrellas, <laughs> like when you get married and you got the umbrellas. <laughs> lights like, 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 like this, he had all this lighting stuff and everything. And and the guy had this, I don't know what it's called. It's got this, this lighting thing and it'll go next to your face and they're doing all these things. And this guy's a professional photographer. He's taking pictures of all this. And so I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna say something stupid. You know, it's very easy for me to do that. I said, uh, wow, um, you have some very Im impressive equipment. You have the best of everything. Everything you have here is top of the line. And he says to me, he goes, are you a professional photographer? I said, no, but I got the same setup in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me the who farted look, which is like this. You know, like this. <laughs> I thought it was funny, you know, and the guy, and then, then I think there was How second. often do you get the who farted look? I'm thinking you get that a lot. Well, I know. I said an inappropriate joke <laughs> a, a while back. I love it. And um, I can't say that either. You can say it. Just don't say the two words I told you not to say. You could say penis. You could say penis. Or cock. You could That's say. Med medical. It's a medical, yes. So a friend of mine asked me if I ever dated twins. I said, yeah. I guess I dated twins, and uh, it was cool, whatever. And then my buddy goes, well, how did you tell them apart? I was like, well, Jessica, sometimes she would wear red uh, nail polish or pink, and Tom had a penis. <laughs> <laughs> And so my buddy's, my buddy's crying. He goes, that's some funny shit. That is funny. So, oh, this, but you know, one thing too is, is life is, life is short. You might as well have fun. Um, I love going all over. I've been all over Texas, everyone. I was in Corpus Christi. I'm in Austin. I'm in San Antonio. I'm here in Dallas. Um, I'm, I'm all over the place, you know, selling booze. And, yeah. And, so and, and it's, it's fun doing this stuff, but you're, not, but you're, but you're not selling booze. What you're doing is you're sharing a great idea. How did you get involved with Soldier Valley, Soldier Valley Spirits? How, how did this come about? I mean, you're I'm, obviously you're a, a super fun, gregarious guy. You've been this way since I've known you since whatever it was, eighth grade or whatever. But so um, it, it's it's neat about the whole deal is, is is let's go back. We've been doing this now nine years now nine years but 20 years ago jeff Haddon, who started this company he said to me he said rich i got this great idea i got i want to make bourbon in nebraska i want to make bourbon bourbon this would be great we'll do bourbon we'll do a, a super line of bourbon and i was like well good luck to you i hope it works out you know that's cool you know i'm in the military i'm in the army at the time i got a full-time job and I traveled with him to Jack Daniels and, and we met some pretty cool people and people were always encouraging us if we, if we want to be a micro distillery, if we want to pursue making, you know, like my grandfather, the moonshine liquor or making bourbon, you know, go for it. So then let's fast forward. Jeff is all about this. He's got these ideas, everything. So one of the ideas, this is really cool. Now, one of the ideas was this, when he told me, Rich, I got a, I, all right, we got the bourbon thing's a great idea, but the package, I got a great idea for the package. You cannot tell anyone. I'm not the person you say that to. You don't say, Rich, I got a, <laughs> I got a, I got a secret, you know, no. Wait, 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 wait. You don't say I have a great package to anybody or no, you don't, no, no, don't I, tell I, anybody? No, 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 a package for the, the liquor, oh, whatever. I got it, I got it. Because I know you tell everybody you so, have yeah. a great package Shit. all the time. I wish my wife thought so. <laughs> so, but, but Joanne, I love you. So, uh, so, so what happened was, is so cool. He goes, Hey, you know, that World War II airborne demonstration team that we're a part of in, in Frederick, Oklahoma, part of that, that uniform is a, is a World War II canteen bottle, you know, concave back, all this, whatever. And it sits here. It's a metal canteen, but I got this idea to make it glass. And I'm like, here's the thing, Jeff Haddon. The chances of you getting a patent for that bottle probably be slim to none. And he says, well, I'm one up on you. I already got it. 
And I'm like, what? He goes, the patent ran out in 1979. I own the patent for the bottle. Now, this is about a fourth generation bottle. We had bottles that had a chain like the old World War II that had a chain for the cap. Uh, a lot of work and became, yeah. I don't even want to get into that. No, but, no, we actually know about packaging. Like people don't, oh. people don't take into account. When I go to liquor stores and I see these complex bottles, I just go, oh my gosh, that is so much, so, so much, much into, it. into that. And you put a dog tag on there, you see the, the ones right here, but so uh, Jeff goes, I got this idea, don't tell anybody. And then it comes into everything. There's attorneys and getting patents and putting everything all together. And next thing you know, we're off, off and running. I'm retiring from the military after 24 and a half, five, 25 years, getting all this together. And then he's getting this thing rolling. I'm helping out a little bit. I become an investor slash, we said co-owner, but an investor in this whole thing. I believe in it too, because the number one message of this whole thing was this, to give back to our disabled veterans, our veterans and disabled veterans. If we have a business, like we talked about when we first started the podcast, if we have a business to give back to our veterans and give back, I am all in. And that was what Jeff said too. Jeff goes, that's, we'll give a dollar or more back from every bottle that we sell from today until we sell the company or how long it goes, that's what we'll do. And I said, Jeff, I'm on, I'm with and you. I just, when you look at somebody or you look at a large company like Apple or whatever and Amazon and they say, okay, we're going to give back. But when you're a startup and you're already oh. in the hole and you're giving back before you've made anything, that is a commitment to your why. Your why is to help these disabled veterans and you guys started in the negative you as a co-owner in the negative but you're giving back immediately right off the bat like day one because i um, i not many people know this and i'll tell you and here it is to tell everybody uh, i took out a personal loan you wow. know because i believed in this and it could have been we've been to vegas before <laughs> you know <laughs> and you could throw you know it, uh, to me it, it to me the gamble was right i knew that it was the right thing to do and uh i i took out a personal loan to, to i mean when the house is on the line and and all that stuff the same thing with jeff out there you know we put you put in investors too you put everything on because you believe in a product I love this product i love going out and selling it and it's easy to sell in texas of every place I went to, I mean, how about this for, for odds here or for, you know, statistics and whatever, every place I went to, not one person said no. So everybody took it on. Now the Fort Hood, the Fort Sam Houston, the Fort May, uh, Camp Mabry, uh, there are a lot, there, then the Air Force bases that we went to with our dis with distributor. So it's Greenlight Distribution Company. Greenlight is getting into AFES, the Army Air Force Exchange Service. Once they get all of their ducks in order, we will see a lot of product going into these military bases because we sell a lot of different air, military bases, but we have different distributors like RNDC and Republic National Distribution Company. So once we get going on here in Texas, I got a good feeling about this, especially with these military bases, because we have a good history because I've sold at Fort Hood before. Now, Fort Hood and Colleen, that's a big base. I mean, it's a huge base. When I was there, I sold 48 bottles in an hour and 15 minutes. 48 of these bottles, hour and 15 minutes. I thought it was easy. I told them about the give back, my history of being in the military. It was that easy. So I just wanted to just go over the one thing one more time. You didn't even realize it, but so at Atron Teal, all of us uh, read, uh, we, all, we were all required to read, not required, we asked everybody to read the book, Start With Why. It's a book by Simon Sinek. And if you have a why, you can overcome whatever, what, whatever, how, but you focus yes. on the why. And you have stayed true to your why, which is helping disabled veterans. So when you walk into a place and the way that you talk about it, you're not trying to convince me that, you, that this is a bourbon that is, you know, it is really good, it is all these things, but you're like, look, we worked really hard at this, but more importantly, there's a bigger why to the whole company. Soldier Valley has a purpose that is bigger. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this is essentially veteran-owned, veteran-run. Yes. And so all you guys are on the same page. All you guys have seen combat. All you guys know what it's like. And all you guys, I mean, you're, if, if you're, you're always in a good mood. But the fact that you actually qualified for a disability means that you're in pain sometimes. And you hide it well. 
And you know that there's other people that have a whole lot more. And one of my big passions is basically gut brain health. And I have a lot of veterans that come see me because we're trying to make sure that their intestinal health is taken care of because if that isn't, then their brain health is not. And we know that PTSD is a huge deal. And when you take these people out, the liquor is a way to get money to them. The liquor is not a way to heal them. The way to heal them is your message and to get it out there and to tell people that you're trying to do something bigger. You've done it on an individual level where you take people honey, you take people ice fishing, you get them out of their, you know, out of their house and you, you accommodate them. And I think that's super amazing. And I think this is just an extension. This is a great way just to get the word out. So I want to commend you. I want to thank you for your service. And, thank you, uh, Ken. Cheers for coming on over oh, here, man. Wow. I'm super, super proud of what you've done and what you have going on now. Take it. You can, take it over while I call. That just that just that just water, everyone. Yeah, that's that's the sad part. Swallowing wrong on water. When you're trying to say something while drinking. That means <clears throat> when my mind is like going, say this, and my and I'm trying to swallow. And so I've got my hand disagreeing with my mind talking. So So with uh, a story to add on to this, my son Riley, he has Crohn's disease. And so how we found out about Crohn's disease is a thing that no one should ever, as a parent, parents should never, ever see. So we found out when he had a fistula. Oof. Oh, my God. So you learn so much, and you know all about these different things. When Riley had that, and he went to the emergency room, and all of that happened, I felt deflated. I am a very, I, uh, you know... But when your kid has something like that, and then they said he has Crohn's disease. And so Boys Town in Omaha has done a phenomenal job to help him out, you know, starting off with the Remicade. And that was, they it, What's, it, it, uh, you know, my sister Claudia has been a teacher at Boys Town for quite a while now. What, how did Boys Town get involved? Uh, it was, uh, they, from what the doctor said, it was the right place. The research, the research hospital there. Wow. I did the, not know it, that. It is in the doctors there that they've worked with us are awesome. They're great doctors. And now he's on Humira and it works out great, but we've not had any flare ups, no nothing, but that is a scary, scary thing. Cause he's going into university of Nebraska at Lincoln. He's going to be a freshman this year, but he takes care of his own health, everything, and um, he wants to be a psychiatrist. I mean, he wants to be a doctor. I mean, my kids, thank God, they take their smarts from their mother. So they're all like 4.0s. <laughs> so for college, you guys are set. Uh, so I'm proud of him. And But, you know, taking care of his own disease and knowing your body and, and everything, um, it says a lot to Riley. He does, a, he does a great job with all that. Early on in the podcast, we had uh, a great guest, Panis Kak- Kakpur, and... She came on because she has had Crohn's. We diagnosed her when she was 18 or 19, and I had to tell her mom that. And the whole the reason why I wanted her on was to discuss that, one, you're a patient, but as a parent, it affected her mom tremendously, where it's like, wow, my child is is sick with this chronic relapsing remitting disease it's really tough as a parent to, to see a child that's sick i mean the tough is an understatement i mean come on let's just say it when, it's one of the toughest things when the doctors told us about remicade i'm not saying bad about remicade when they talked about us it talked about the long term of uh, effects and all of this and once again you know there it's a it's a wonderful drug it does its it does its purpose but we were going Oh my gosh, what, and it's, you know, IV infusion, all that. And it was like, oh my gosh. And this young kid took it like a champ. So when they would do all that, and even today, um, yeah, super proud of him. But yeah, that, that was, uh, as a parent, you just, you, you know, wow. Yeah. It's, and you've, you've seen a lot, you've seen a lot of wow throughout your life. Oh you've yeah. Seen a lot that, of wow. that was a huge wow. And that one kind of took you to your knees. That's yeah. The first one that kind of set you back a little bit. Big time. Yeah. That's well. So, Jeff Haddon got you involved in this. <laughs> Let's get to what this is, because this is exciting. In fact, like, so we got a couple bottles here um, up front. I think they do something really cool. The bottles are shaped like World War II canteens. Is that correct? Yes, sir. They've got dog tags on them. Show them that. So, here's our dog tag. This is Lee Greenwood. 
and I could talk about him. Yeah, what's the deal with Lee Greenwood? Wait till you hear this one. So, it's right here. Nonprofit veterans groups. We are, you know, there's all sorts of celebrities out there, but think about this guy, Lee Greenwood. Lee Greenwood is all about America, all about the USA, his patriotic songs, everything that he has. He, this guy, the guy goes out and soldiers cry. I've seen soldiers cry cry they, they get so emotional over everything when we met him he was all about america he was all about veterans he was all about giving back to his disabled veterans which he already did he had all these different avenues all these different people already on his team and he's got a team of people all about giving back to veterans when you looked at everything, a guy who loves his veterans, his military, loves America, loves everything about all the stuff that we love, you got a great fit. I mean, you think about a celebrity. I thought about celebrities, and I'm going to throw out a couple names, and you'll go, <laughs> okay. So I thought about Sylvester Stallone, huh? and yeah. I, I, I reached out to him, never called me back. I reached out to Arnold Schwarzenegger. These were all my 80s movies I loved back in the day. <laughs> I can't, I can't remember, reach back to all the people in Red Dawn or whatever, but you no, know, I, I, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he never called me back. And I thought, okay, and this is going back a, a while back. And then uh, we thought, well, celebrity, we really, really don't need one. We'll just do our deal. It's nice to have a celebrity endorsement, but when it comes down to him, um, he signed bottles for Father's Day in Omaha, Nebraska, and the line went all over the store. The store is a Toys R Us. I'm sure you had Toys R Us's here. They all closed down. Like, like yeah, yeah. yeah. So these Toys R Us stores in Omaha are now liquor, huge liquor stores. Oh, you're just kidding. Monster <laughs> liquor store. So, so you go to the Toys R Us for liquor now. But he was in there signing <laughs> autographs, and the line went all over the place and people, they love his message. They love when he signs the bottle and I talk about him and he, when he, when we talk to him back in the day, it's all about funneling as much money as we can to our veterans. That's, that's his message. He goes, help out, you know, we building homes for the heroes. Um, we, we signed a check a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago for, well, it's only, I hate to say only eight grand, but eight grand for us, it, it's its a big deal, but there's many signed checks that we've done. Well, you guys are still just getting started. Well, I mean, nine, this is... nine years now, but it's still, it's a its Look, a slow as, deal. As somebody yeah. who's, I mean, we've got Atron Teal here. I mean, I've talked to so many entrepreneurs and there's just the famous saying, you know, it only took 10 years to become an overnight success. <laughs> I mean, everything. Everything. Ten, when ten it's, years. Yeah. I mean, everything <laughs> takes work. People don't ever see that end of it. They just go, ah, man, Rich is lucky. He he has that uh, Soldier Valley, you know, company. And no, you didn't see you driving from every single city. You, they didn't see you going out, meeting with veterans, doing stuff, having uh, those types of meetings where you're doing bottle signings and you're asking, and you're, it, it's time away from the family. It's time away from, your, it. from your kids. It's, it's all that stuff, but you have the why and the why is going to work. That's it. And then, you know, one story too, is we, we sent a World War II veteran to Holland and Normandy for the, for the, uh, one of the anniversaries. And we, we paid for part of his ticket and paid for his stay and paid for all this and everything. And these are things that nobody knows about this. I mean, I mean, but it, it's one thing that made us feel good to bring back an abled World War II veteran to Normandy was a big, big deal to us. And I got pinned on a, a World War II airborne demonstration team. Can, we talked can about- I just wait, hold on, I just want yeah. to stop. A World War II veteran. Yes. How old was he? He was old. I mean, I, I, yeah, super, <laughs> yeah, super old. This is in 2000, 2015, I got pinned on uh, the gold wings of the ADT, the airborne demonstration team. He pinned on my, the wings um, on my t-shirt. Yeah. And so there was no backings. Okay. Just pinned the wings on and he jumped into Holland and Normandy in 1944, this guy. And I got a great video of it. I could, I could show it to you. It's so cool. But so, but then after that was done, I'm like, well, how about the backings? The Colonel, which who was a green beret Colonel, then he did the blood wings and he, he slammed those wings with those backings, went into my flesh, we'll put it that way. Is that what it's supposed to be, blood it, wings? It, blood wings is what it was. Oh. And so when he when they took them out, it went pop, pop from the two stick. Oh, wow. So I was like, well, I didn't see that coming. I didn't think that... <laughs> 
<laughs> because in the army, that's illegal. You can't do that in the army. But yeah, old school. Yeah, old, old school. yeah, old school. But these these old guys, and I think most of these guys were all passed on. But they were so cool. I said, "Were you afraid when you were when you were jumping?" We were, was there, I mean, he goes, of course we were afraid, but our, our biggest thing was, and, and all you military people know this, it was about your brother. It was about your brother. I want you to come home. It's all about, you want me to come home. We work hard to bring each other home. It's That's not, what, it's not about you. It's about it's, the other, it's not about, it's the, about other the other guy yeah. and these guys. And then when he talked about the, um, um, uh, Hitler's uh, nest, what was it? The Eagle's nest. When they made it up there, whatever, he says, yeah, I, I was sitting in Hitler's chair, one of his chairs, and looking outside, and I was drinking some of his his uh, wine or whatever it was, and I'm like, that is badass. I mean, you're a badass. Dude, having that conversation <laughs> with that person is incredible. Oh, it was, That's insane. Um, you know, my grandfather went up and down the California coastline looking for Japanese subs, you know, so after... Pearl Harbor, they would go up and down the California coastline. Never saw a Japanese sub, but that's just one part of World War II. I thought that was pretty cool. You know, looking for Japanese subs, they had depth charges, all this junk. But that is a cool story. You hear these... You hear these stories. I also had a great, great uncle Maloney. Um, he was taken POW by the Germans and they oh. tied him up and the Germans, they took, and you and I have taken some shots to the face before they, he, he got hit in the face by the Germans. And then, but you, I mean, how terrible is that? You're bound up with your hands behind your oh, back geez. and some guy take a cheap shot right to your face. And he's like, yeah, that's what I remembered about the German army. I'm like, God, I'd really hate them after, <laughs> after that shit, you know, my God. So yeah, these stories, you hear a lot of these stories. It was, it was really neat to meet these guys. And uh, I was doing the whole Soldier Valley Spirits then too. And, and the, I remember a lot of the stories from the people said, hey, keep this, keep this going. Thanks, you, know, you got a good thing going on here. Keep this going. And yeah, you have your ups and downs. COVID, when COVID hit, I was like, wow, we're making hand sanitizer now. You know, that's what we're, that's our business now. I mean, and, but it was tough for me to go out and see people. So it just cut back on a lot of stuff, but now I am full bore everywhere. So from here to Kentucky, um, from Kentucky, I got Virginia, I got, I'm in El Paso. It's about spreading the word. It's about spreading the word and getting and seeing people and saying, I got a great product here and I get back to veterans. I mean, we're going to still get into it. <laughs> But if you're going to sit there and have some buddies over for a couple really good cocktails, we're going to talk about how good these are and how much these guys make sure that these are top notch. You guys have won a bunch of awards and all that other stuff. I want to tell one story really quick that, um, so my father passed away when I was 21 years old. I was, uh, it was a junior year when he got sick and he was in the hospital, um, the hospital, did that hospital close down Creighton, the the yes. One at Creighton. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that hospital closed down in Omaha. My father was sick, and this guy right here showed up in full dress gear to cheer my dad up. Full dress gear meaning like you had the full on, like like you were being awarded a medal, and you came and gave my dad a gift and hung out. And then I showed up later, and my dad told me that you had showed up in full dress gear and hung out with him all day. So that is really cool. I remember that distinctly. You know what I had to say too, and and this goes to a lot of our friends, parents, is that as I I wanted to thank a hey, thank you for being supportive of me when I was overseas. Thank you for I mean I bring it up again, beef jerky that maybe cost ten dollars. I don't care. I thought that was ten dollars, and you had to move a house. Yeah, but twenty years later, I want to I want hey I want to I want to thank you, and it's it's all about. I think it's maybe an Argentinian thing or maybe an Italian thing, whatever. It's all about respect, respect of your elders, respect of, of people's families. We have a, we have a mutual friend, um, John Turka. Yeah. All right. So John Turka is a fireman in Omaha. Uh, John's mom died of cancer a long, long time ago, but before about a week before she died, she wanted to see me. And this is, really? this is, this is a really this is one story that I, I've told my kids and yet I pass this on. So Mrs. Turka, Jan Turka said, I'd like to see you. So I go into, you know, this is at Bergen Mercy Hospital in Omaha. I sit down. I'm like, hey, Mrs. Turka, how you doing? She's like, not good. Uh, I don't I don't think I'm going to make it. You know, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to make it. And she said, she said this. She goes, will you do me a big favor? And I said, yes, whatever you want. 
whatever, you know, I, I, at that time I was in uniform also. And she goes, please stay in my son's life. Oh, do not. I, I, I want you in my son's life. Will you promise me that you will stay in John's life? And I, yes, whatever you want. Those, those things like that, you, as, as the older you get and the more things get taken away from you and you know, all this and everything, the more you, you look back on that and you honor that word. And, you know, John was at my son's, um, graduation from high school and I go see him for his kids deals, but yeah, I will always stay in his life. Those That's stories awesome. like that, you know, we got for us and everything, we got some great for friendship wise. We got some, we don't see each other often. But it's still there, you know. Those kind of friendships, uh, we would walk through flames for for friends, you know. And that's a good thing to say. Yeah, it really is. So our goal here <laughs> is to spread the word on Soldier Valley spirits. You brought some spirits here. We're gonna taste them. We're gonna do a little taste test. I, I can't wait. All right, what do we got here first? All right, we have bourbon. Okay, so this is Soldier Valley bourbon. This is. 90 proof, 45% alcohol. Uh, the mixture on this one would be 51% corn, 36% rye, okay? The rye is a softer grain. When you taste this for a bourbon, and this is a six-year bourbon, on the, you probably can't see this, but there's a six on the side of the bottle. Oh, yeah. And our motto a lot back in the day was, we had a lot of sixes. Uh, the six means distilled six times vodka, aged six-year bourbon, and we got your six, we got your back. If the Explain enemy- Explain that in military terms If the quick. enemy is at, in a basic military infantry, if the enemy is at your 12 o'clock position, your enemy, you call out, you know, different fields of fire, all that, but you got your 12 o'clock, your six is your back. So when I say, I got your six, I got your back. Oh. I got your back. So I'm looking after you. So the, the six, I got your back, is giving the money back to a nonprofit veterans group. I got your six. Oh, that's cool. So that's all sorts of different, you know, and sometimes I sign bottles here and I'll put ATW all the way. ATW is a World War II airborne kind of sane. And so it's ATW all the way. But the six, I got your six. That's, that's pretty cool. So a bourbon, so to be classified as a bourbon, so a lot of people go, well, bourbon can't, I get this every time, sometimes in Kentucky and Tennessee, <laughs> like, well, bourbon oh, can't, they are snobby about their bourbon, bourbon can't be made in, in Nebraska. I'm like, yes, it can. I said, President Taft, who was a Supreme Court justice, we're learning all sorts of stuff today. There we go. <laughs> so usually, usually it's a science podcast, but so, we're just, but we're learning how to say, uh, I wish I was a doctor. How cool would that be? <laughs> so, uh, so here we go. So. To be classified as a bourbon, this is 51% corn. To be classified as a bourbon, 51% corn. It's gotta go, when it's distilled, it's distilled between 140 and 160 proof. It's gotta go into a brand new barrel. It's gotta age for two years. Now this is what President Taft said. That's to, it. To, to qualify as to being qualified called a bourbon. bourbon. And then it has to be the last one. It has to be made in these United States of America. Bourbon cannot be made in Scotland. Bourbon cannot be made in Canada. Bourbon can be made in Texas. Bourbon can be made in Nebraska. Bourbon right here. Bourbon. So you got whiskey and you got bourbon. You hear bourbon, whiskey, whiskey, bourbon. What, so you got a bourbon and you got a whiskey. A whiskey can be a heavy corn whiskey, can be a rye whiskey, wheat whiskey. It can be a lot, of, a lot of different whiskeys for the mash bill when you're making. I've distilled a lot, of, a lot of spirits, but there's a lot of different recipes. But to be classified as a bourbon, you have to follow that, that criteria. Um, the reason six years, the longer, Ken, the longer this stays in a barrel, the better it tastes. And the more expensive it gets too. Well, this you know? is, I, I think there was an episode I was in, uh, I was in, when I was in Croatia, I was walking around, I was listening to a Joe Rogan episode. They were discussing some of the most expensive, uh, well, they were just referring to everything as whiskeys. But dude, there's some like whiskeys that have been in barrels forever and they charge just silly amounts, just silly, silly, silly amounts. Just a little bit here. Yeah. So and what do we, oh, wow. And then this is, is, I always do this. You know, here's the thing. Here's to our veterans. Here's to that grandfather, my, my Nanu, Carl Salanitra, that went up and down the California coastline. 
Here's to all the veterans that we've known. Everybody knows of somebody that served, everybody that, that served in the military or is currently serving. But here's to them. Here's to their legacy. But once again, here's to our veterans. I always throw it down. Love you, Ken. Love you, Here we Rich. Go. That is outstanding. Boy, that is good, soft. Good caramel color. Yeah. The rye is oh, a softer. A tremendous aftertaste. The rye is a softer grain. So it's softer on your palate. This is 90 proof, ladies and gentlemen. This is no joke. Oh, it doesn't feel like that at all. Um, I've had, I, I've, I've made my own stuff at 101 proof. You've done your own moonshine oh, like your grandfather? So, yeah, we've, we've done. And I, I actually did a, I, I distilled, put it in a little small five gallon barrels. And I did a deal for our 30th anniversary of the Gulf War, 30 years. So I gave out bottles of 101 proof. Now, you add ice to this, what does it do? It melts, it waters it down, the water. That's when you cut your product. When you cut your product, you cut it with a, with a fine quality water. You put a little water in here and open it up or put some ice in here. But this is, this is remarkable. This is delicious for a six-year bourbon and then, you know, it's, I, I like it, the whole thing with everything. And then Lee Greenwood, I remember when his people tasted it, because um, we thought, well, we keep the same recipe. We, do we change anything? No, this is exactly what, this is what he wanted. This is yeah, this really is good. good. This is, when you smell it, it's got, it, it, the caramel comes up, you get a little bit of the wafting of the alcohol, which is cool, because it kind of wakes you up a little bit. And then tasting it, that is really complex. I mean, truly complex. It's so, got, oh, and then the other thing, we always talk about something on this show. I remember um, Ari Shafir was, <laughs> was on Rogan talking about how whiskey's good for you. He, they just refer to everything as whiskey, so, but we're going to say bourbon's good for you because there's polyphenols in here. There's actually beneficial molecules. Yes. Then mm. we're, we're going to say, I want to talk about one. This is a good thing. I want to talk about- out here so that perfect. we can taste these. I want to talk about a recipe. Old fashions. Oh, when I am, I live on a golf course, Omaha, Nebraska. Um, when I do, when I do my old fashions, guys, you got to hear this is, a, is an easy recipe. So, what I usually do is I have off the side, I'll have my orange, I'll have my orange bitters, I'll have my good bourbon or a whiskey, I'll have a good ginger beer. I will do my own. I call it happy sauce, which is half brown sugar and half super hot water. Brown sugar, water. I'll, so, I'll, so I'll do like four cups of hot water, four cups of brown sugar. And I'll stir that up, put that in the refrigerator. Then what I'll do is I will have my cherries, the, God, what's the name of the cherries? I can't even think of it right now. I'm going to mess that one up. So I'll have my cherries. Yeah, what's the name? Of it? Yeah. yeah the, so the, the cherries I go have. Keep talking. I'm we'll going to look for those cherries. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll start off with ice. I'll put the bourbon on there, a whiskey, and then I'll put some of the happy sauce on top of that. And once that's all going, everything, I'll put a little ginger beer. Oh, we're, we're good. Oh, we're wow. good. We're good right there. We knocked over the camera. And then um, I'll put some of the ginger beer on there and then I'll have my little stir and then I'll take a full orange. I'll take that orange and I'll, I'll cut that in little quarters and everything. I'll put that on top of there. And then the best is this. I'll take some orange bitters and I'll sprinkle a little bit of orange bitters. This is the premium cocktail cherries I use. Um, I found these in Texas and I'll put some of this and I'll put some of this happy, happy cherry juice on top. And so for an old fashioned, when you take that full, uh, you know, Every, when you put it all together, it's it's delicious. I love it. Um, I think a lot of the orange bitters and the full orange, you know, and, and squeeze it on there just becomes perfect. So on my in my neighborhood, I make all these old fashions. So people are like, hey, Rich, what do you got going on here? I was like, I got my bourbon. I'm going to make some old fashions. I'll do a double of that. So the happy sauce, the brown sugar with the hot water when it's chilled. And so, oh, sorry. When it's all, when it's, oh, it is outstanding. So you that guys, sounds really good. I'll, I'll Old fashioned. So uh, one of the members of my team, Stephen, who uh, keeps us in line, he is a huge old fashioned fan and he's insistent on putting it in the proper glass. He's insistent. I mean, he'll send it back. He's like, ah, that's just not a very good old fashioned. And I've, so. I've done the smoked with a hickory smoke with the, uh, 
with the glasses. I've done that before. And there's all sorts of things that you, you could do. Do all the bottles come with a dog tag? They do. Okay. And I'm going to say this right now to all your fans. Sometimes I went to a liquor store here in Dallas and there were some dog tags missing. Oh no. And you guys, this is the most craziest thing. They're on there, but people are taking some of these dog tags. I'm not accusing anything, anybody of anything, but people are taking some dog tags from our stuff. That's not nice. I, but it's, it's kind of nice. funny, but Oh, I can't believe it. We do custom dog tags. So if there is a liquor store out there that buys a barrel and that's 190 some bottles, we will do a custom dog tag for you. So if it's Ken Brown liquor store or whatever, you know, whatever it is, we'll do custom dog tags for you on a single barrel, uh, you know, bottle. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Actually, it's not a big deal. As long as they're carrying it around and people see it, then it's advertised. Oh so, yes. Yeah. All right, what do we got going on here? All right, so what this is a doing? whiskey. It's a heavy corn whiskey. This is only two. All right, so I went from the best to this is very good. So this is a two-year whiskey, and a two-year whiskey that's only two years. I keep on saying the two years over and over again. It still smells good. It still smells good. Some people like this more. The price point is going to be a lot less. So on a whiskey like this, this could be a mixer. A lot of people, we used to have, uh, we used to call it a frontier whiskey. A frontier whiskey is sometimes less than two years old or around that two-year mark. And this is aged in our used bourbon barrel. So bourbon barrel, like I told you, the bourbon barrel, this one's brand new. So when we do aging whiskey, we age the whiskey in a used bourbon barrel. Now this guy right here, once again, this is 86 proof. I think it's really good, too, for just a regular whiskey. It smells good. It's not quite as deep as the other one in uh, sort of a caramel-type scent, but it still smells really good. I sure do like it, though. We, That's we're, it. we're not going to toast each one. We should. We should at least just, just say to veterans. To our veterans. Yeah, great color, great caramel color. Great. This is a very, very good. Uh, they, they always say peppery notes. And everything, it's a little, it's a, not much of a bite for 86 mm -mm. proof. No, there isn't. But it, but delicious. If you're a mixer. If, if I were to compare this to like a wine. So after I swallowed it, taste was good. And then the taste evaporates a little bit quicker than this one. This one, the taste lingers. Yes. There's complexity. In for a six year it. bourbon, yes. Yeah. But yeah, this is, uh, this is very good. I like it. Don't you love this kind of stuff? This oh, dude, of, I just absolutely I mean, adore it. I just adore it because here's what we're talking about. You have an opportunity to help out. We've got these really, I mean, amazing bottles, Soldier Valley. And knowing you invite some buddies over, you can use his old-fashioned recipe. And knowing that every single sip you take, you're helping somebody out. <clears throat> Roger. That's... That's the coolest thing. Knowing that we'd be like, hey, come on over, guys. We're going to watch the game. I'm going to make a few drinks. I know you typically like uh, beer or you typically, you know, whatever. <clears throat> Not much of a drinker. We're all going to have one little tiny sip like we're doing, you know, less than what quarter of an ounce or something. And we're going to make one toast. And we're going to say that this is some of this is going towards our veterans. And a lot of people need some help. And we know that there are a lot of. Uh, veterans that would at least like to believe that there are people toasting them at some point. You know, <clears throat> you're, you're right. And, and I like this one too. The, uh, the golf outing that I talked about with the check we talked about, um, the one guy, he said this, now I'm not going to mention any names or any of this, but he, the one thing he said is he goes, that's so neat that you do what you do and you, you care. And then he didn't know anything about me. I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a service to table veteran too. Um, I don't, I didn't lose any, any parts of my body or anything like that, but I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm with you with this. I, uh, I believe in, in I believe in helping you out and in anything. In, and I don't want to exploit. That's one thing. I don't want to exploit anything. Um, a lot of things were done under the radar, but for, for you, you know, we got a, we got, we got a nice picture with him, with his check and all of that. But I plan on taking the guy hunting this fall. Nice guy. But when we 
get him into his new home, uh, that's going to be a huge deal. And he's got two young kids. He's divorced, two young kids, but I want to be there too. And I want to, I don't want to be one of those people where you see me once and Hey, thank you very much. No, I, I will be around and, and help him out. So yeah, the more that we sell, the more that we give back to, and that's the whole story. Yeah. And <clears throat> All right, what are we doing now? We're going to do vodka. Now, we had vodka before. We, we didn't have too much. That was a very nice drink, by the way. Um, vodka, a lot of people don't drink vodka neat. And this vodka is a distilled six times vodka. And I like it. I like this, this a lot. My drink. Can you explain what distilled six times mean? I get the, the aging for a certain amount of time, but what is distilled? This is it. I love this because we're really getting into the nuts and bolts of everything. When you distill a product, I've distilled a lot. I've distilled, we have we have some pretty big stills. And I am not a master distiller. I've just distilled a lot of spirits before. When you're distilling, there's four parts of dist the distillation run. Your, four, your first thing is four shot. Four shot is a methanol ethanol blend. If you drink too much of it, it will make you blind. You don't want to do that. No. You got your head, hearts, and tails. How do you know where you're at on the spectrum? When you first start distilling, the first thing that comes out of the still is your four shot, that methanol ethanol blend. Gritty, looks cloudy, it's not good. You, you, could, you know it, any distiller out there, out there knows what it looks like. Then you get into the head. The head, you're clearing up, then you get to the heart of the run. The heart of the run, as long as you could, you could, you could draw out that in hours, the heart of the run, it's more money in your pocket to put it that way. The heart of the run is the prime rib, the, the filet mignon, the perfect, the, the best of the best is in the heart of the run. Let's just say that we're making bourbon at I'm, I'm running my still at 156 proof. One on a hydrometer, you're running 156 proof and you're running, you're running and you're running this thing Let's just say you're running 156 proof for 12 to 14 hours. Four, 12 to 14 hours of a nice, nice flow, a beautiful bourbon coming out of that still at 150 some proof. Guess what we start doing? After, let's say that 14, 15, 16 hours, we start losing proof. We start going to 140, 130. One, that's when we switch over our tanks. Now we've gone from the heart to the tails, the tails portion of it, we're losing proof. So now we go to 120, 110, 100. We go into the 80s. We are losing, we have distilled everything we can out of this 800 gallons. We have distilled as much as we can. It's, it's, it's like a squeegee. We've only taken, we've taken all the good stuff out and now we're down to this last thing called tails. We will collect the tails, we will collect the, all right, so yeah, your four shot, we'll make, we can make so uh, do you, cleaner yeah, so with do that. So do you actually remove the remove, four shot? Remove the four shot. Okay. The four shot is gone. The head and the tails, the next time, we will actually get many five-gallon buckets of that. This is an old moonshiners deal, and a lot of, a lot of distilleries do this too. We will jumpstart the next run. The next time that we distill alcohol with a whole new, brand new mash recipe, we will take those mixtures of that head and the tails, and we will dump that on top of the mash. What does that do? It jumpstarts the next run. Oh, awesome. By putting that extra kick in there is that the, is that kind of cool i mean putting that extra extra alcohol in there jump starts the next run but the the heart of the run is the only thing that's in these bottles it's only the heart awesome all right so what are we, we're gonna do a little vodka now we're huh? gonna do a little vodka okay now my rest so, i'm sorry the the six the six times distilled distilled means six times you are redistilling that six different times to take impurities out uh -oh. after six times if there's impurities and there's some bad vodka out there okay all of you out there back in <laughs> i can't say high school let's say college right we've had we had you had some vodka and the next you and i had some vodka oh yeah school. you had a freight train in your head the next day that was probably some really really bad shit 
Can we say that? That was some bad stuff, some bad vodka. Not saying that this is hangover proof, but this is premium vodka here that, I mean, if you're going to drink something, you take the impurities out of there, this is it. So distilled six times, distilled six times out of the, out of your out of your still. A lot of times people... Means, like, is it, I've always wondered this because it's a marketing term used by vodka companies. Yeah. Is it, is, is it go through a filter or how is it distilled? It's, it's re-put in and re-distilled. Oh, re-put in. That's it. Re, okay. Re-distilled six times and you're taking impurities out and there's impurities in that vodka. So if it's each a pot- time you're taking like the, like the whole, like the tail out. Everything. With, okay. It goes through the whole deal again. It's, 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 it's really fine tuning your product. That's the best way to put it. Fine tuning to make it perfect. Distilled six times. Um, vodka out there too. I've done a lot of taste tests and we've, I love these stories guys. There was this super smoking hot woman, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and Joanna, you know, the story she is selling Svedka bottles of vodka the svetka bottles now are now are made in america that were made in sweden back in the day this is about four years ago there's a smoking hot girl and you guys all you guys out there and and, and you see a girl and go my god that girl's smoking hot that girl was smoking hot she's right here i'm right over here i have my vodka soldier valley vodka and she's over there with her svetka I had 24 bottles to sell. I sold all 24 bottles. She sold two. She says to me, she says, hey, a, a beautiful woman now turns ugly, by the way. She goes, <laughs> hey, like this. She goes, what are you telling these people? What are you telling? The, the this is I'm, like, this is like yeah. a shallow hal thing. What are you telling like, these people? Like her, like her inner personality is it just shot out. In her. And so I, I'm quick-witted a little bit and i said you know nothing screams american patriotism than swedish made vodka <laughs> she packed her shit up and got left she's like like this and then left and i was like it wasn't that bad of a thing nothing nothing screams american patriotism swedish made vodka and leaves whatever <laughs> so the guy goes hey man what'd you say to her i'm like oh, i don't know but it pissed her off but sold 24 to her too oh my god so yeah there's yeah, and she was smoking hot and turned uh, ugly. That terrible to say that. No, it's yeah. hilarious. It's totally like her 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 inner personality suddenly manifested. Yeah, on, on the outside, and you saw it. That's the shallow went, 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 went from a super nice person to a mean person in seconds. What are you telling these people? Like, I got like, <laughs> oh like, my All God. Right, to our veterans. To our veterans. Here's our vodka. So a corn rye and wheat vodka. You know what's odd about this? There's a little bit of vanilla when you smell it. Oh, yeah. Interesting. For a vodka. Then there's another story. I love this one. A woman brings in a vodka bottle, and this vodka bottle is frozen. Oh, wait a minute. That's really good. Oh, this is excellent. Basically, the thing that if I'm going to drink due to calories and all this other stuff, I'm going to do vodka. This is super smooth. Like, this is a straight vodka, no ice, nothing. This, no. is, this and is fantastic. You do a twist of lime on here or whatever that you're going to do, it's going to be, it's going to be spectacular. Um, I got a good story, but I'm going to tell about a, a drink. I am a, I'm a war junkie. I, I love watching war movies. And one of the movies I liked a lot was a movie called Red Dawn. Red Dawn was a Academy Award winner. Oh. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. No, it was an Academy Award winner when we were growing up. That thing was the best movie ever. So this is 1984, Red Dawn. <laughs> so we what were you, like freshman? I was, I was 14 years old. Yeah. I saw that movie with my mm-hmm. uncle, the, the priest in... Um, I don't know where the hell we saw it, but we, I remember seeing that movie thing. Oh my God, that's the best movie ever. Um, we have a drink called the Red Dawn. The Red Dawn is, you have your ice, vodka, cranberry juice, and on top you put Italian blood red orange soda. Ooh. So Pelle, Pellegrino, how do you say that? Yeah, Pellegrino. Pelle, yeah. So Italian blood red orange soda on top of your cranberry juice, your vodka, and your ice. Call it the Red Dawn. People love it. The Red Dawn. The Red Dawn. I like it. That's actually really good vodka. Like I was expecting, no. since since you guys yeah. are kind of known, you've won awards on the bourbon. You've won a lot of awards. We haven't even gotten into that. You guys, I saw on the website how many awards you guys. Yeah, had a double gold award winner. And then 
In 2020, we were the distillery of the year. That's nuts. So man. that was That's that so was really impressive. really cool, but you try so hard and you do whatever you can to, um, I don't know, I, I try to get out. Like I've been to Virginia and I've done all this stuff in Virginia and talking to people and then, you know, I just need to get out more. Dude, yeah. you're doing an amazing job. You have your why. I, you're, you're competing against just Goliaths. It, so it comes down to marketing. So the thing that's going to make you win is quality and your why. Yes. That's, that's what's going to make you win in the end. This is good shit and you have a great why. I love that with that the burn of the vodka and then inhale and then out your nose you have you have a you don't you have a great flavor and I, I say about vodka you go okay whatever rich there's there's flavor to it and it tastes good um, God that's impressive uh, it, it's Dude, I, I, taste, I love how you're tasting your own stuff for the first I, time again. I, I love I, it. I, I, Meaning that, like, like I, once once you're forced to pause for a moment and think about it, you're like, shit, our our stuff is good. Because I, I've been sampling. These are my sample bottles from Texas, right here. So we're half full, half empty, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, I just I, I I haven't sampled in a while. I was like, that's actually really good. <laughs> um, but it's, it, it is fun when you have friends over and you, you make some drinks for them. And if it's the old fashioned, we call, you know, there's an old kick in the six. We have the red dawn, we, uh, di- different recipes. We can, I could give them to Ken and give them to you, but there's some fun yeah, recipes. We can actually put, put that oh, in the God. show notes. It, we can put yeah, all the recipes in the it, show it notes. It will be and... cool. And I have a bunch of them and, uh, all right. So rum, rum. So this is surprising. I'm looking at a white bottle of rum. I'm used to the Captain Morgan style, brown, yeah. all that stuff. You, what do we got going on? You have a Navy rum, which is an unaged rum. We had a rum that was actually aged in bourbon barrels for about 16 months. And that rum, we still have it. We tried this Navy rum. The recipe for this is pretty easy. And when I made rum back in the day, the recipe, when I did the rum recipe, we're talking 800 gallons of, of rum recipe. Uh, I've got a college degree and, and I'm, I've retired military and everything. And here I am. This is classic. You're going to keep telling the story yeah. because I've been like six cups of water and now a couple, I'm going to go pee. You keep talking. So we're making, we're making rum. And so the neat thing is, is we came up with the recipe and the recipe is this. So anybody wants to make it out there. Uh, the recipe is hot water, sugar cane, bananas, and yeast. So the bananas are a starch compound for our sugar to adhere to for us to ferment to make alcohol. So here I am. This is funny. I whip out the knife here, which, and I'm cutting um, bananas. And so we go to Costco or Sam's Club and we'd buy all these bananas. And so people would stop by and here we are. We're, we're mashing up these bananas. We're got this hot water. We have our mash bill that we have all together. And it, it's, it's funny. The whole thing is is the area smells like bananas. And for a, um, for a rum recipe, it's pretty cool. I mean, here you are, you're, you're making this with bananas and everything, but you got more people that would stop by and go, wow, what is that? That smells delicious. I mean, that is, I mean, not many people smell bananas like that in a, in a boiling water mash bill before we add, you know, uh, everything all, all in there to get that together, but it's just a ton of fun. Um, rum is easy to make, made a ton of rum. Um, we did this Navy rum because we sell, we'll be selling to the uh, Navy Marine Corps exchange service, which is Nexcom. Uh, but a lot of people are, are fans of rum. you got spiced rums. you got, dude, we, I'm we, married to a Puerto Rican. Are you kidding? Like the, <laughs> like the Bacardi, like that was, that was the thing Lloyd and I did is we actually toured the Bacardi facility. I like, Oh my God. I'd love to do that. Oh, it was so cool. So a little rum here makes you happy. So rum is an underrated uh, alcohol or a spirit. I should say spirit. That And what I talked about when you were gone is how easy. Rum is, I think of everything, rum, well, next to vodka, rum is easy to make. I, I, I shared the recipe oh, and sweet. everything. So the hot water, sugar cane, bananas, and yeast. The bananas are a starch compound for your sugars to adhere to, then to ferment. Oh, I got to bring this one up. So let's go back to 1988, 87. You have your elements <laughs> chart, right? In chemistry, in, in chemistry class. And no, no, this had to be by eighth grade. 
So, all right, so AU is gold, and I can't remember half the stuff, but Ken looks at the chart, and I remember we were studying, we were studying, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna have the hardest time on this test. And you're like, oh my God, how easy is this? You had it all like memorized with, this has gotta be, I don't know, ninth grade or whatever. I, you had that know. memorized. Science uh, came a little easier to me than other stuff. I'm horrible at math. My son's incredible at math. I'm horrible at math, so you know. All right, all right so we got a little rum. rum here. All right, what am I looking for? How do, do, can you, good, bad rum, kind of like we talked about with vodka, is there a good, bad rum? Is there, there, there is some bad, this is, once again, 40% alcohol at 80 proof. Um, I've had some rums that have a grit. Is that, that the, I think the best way to describe to it. it. Has a grit to it, where it's like, mm, ah, wow. You know, you don't get this from this, once again. So it kind of, so that rum kind of made your face look like the way that that Sven vodka oh, woman yeah, looked like. Oh, yeah, that woman, I... <laughs> She was you so sort of gave that look like she was so hot. <laughs> Except yeah. when she made that look. How was she like that? <laughs> All right. Oh, here we go. Let's taste this to our veterans. Here's to our veterans. Here's our rum. That is a rum. To us, that's a pure and the, and the price point on this. We're looking at nineteen bucks a bottle. Oh yeah, that's so. You know, and, and same. Well, we're, oh, by the way, this is a heavy bottle. Everyone, this is a. Super heavy bottle, thick bottle, so it's not nothing. When we're going to do something, we're going to do it right. Plus, there's a dog tag on there, too. Um, if you don't have a dog tag on the bottle. Someone just, took it. Someone took it. <laughs> just realize that they're doing free advertising for you. That's how you have to look at it. You can't yeah. be angry at it. I said, next time I come down to Texas I, or wherever, I, I should just bring a bunch of dog tags. And if something's missing, I'll just replace it. Yeah. So, yeah, I like... I don't know if you're a rum person when you were in Puerto I Rico. used to be a rum person big time because just because of the whole Puerto Rican thing, I was like, you know, after you tour the Bacardi facility and you, you learn all about it, you just become, and you know, they have like different flights of rum. And yes. so, you know, I had a lot of fun with rum for a bit. I've had different periods. The one thing I'm really surprised, I do not see a tequila in your lineup here. So you can actually, the, the agave, all that, you could buy all of that. So you could buy all of the, the mixture, everything, and I could take that and put that in my still, and I could distill it out of there. Well, we're going to have could, to do this because, you know, my regular co-host, Eric Rieger, right there, he uh, co-owner of Tequila 512, which is wow. an awesome based tequila, and they went through a lot. He's got great stories like you about going to Mexico and figuring out where, how, where they're going to grow the agave plants, who they're going to have help, you know, cultivate them and stuff like that. That's, I'd love to talk to him. That's, it's so cool because we, I did talk to one guy and he talked about the agave and talked about this and talked about the baking process and everything and the sugar and all of the, and he told this whole story. I'm sorry. I, he told this whole story and I thought it was so cool. And he, like me, he was so passionate about it yeah. and everything. But then the one guy is like tequila, tequila, tequila and rum and all this. And this is, you know, I, I, I really, I, I'm going to, Said, I, I got to say this, I'm all, I love the whiskey, but the bourbon, I've always been a bourbon guy. It's, it's bourbon. I, it's always been my deal, but this guy had a passion for his stuff. My God. So, well, this I'll has been, what, this is fun. It is fun, <laughs> right? So you probably haven't tasted your own stuff. Like, I always, haven't. You're always, that's how Eric was. Eric would do exactly what you were doing when with Tequila 512 launched. And we would talk about it, and I'm like, uh, he's like, well, I got to go here and here. I'm doing a tasting, tasting. And I just asked him, and I'm like, do you drink any of it? He's like, no, I don't, I don't drink any of it because I'm giving it all away, and I'm teaching people about it, and I'm doing that. But what we are going to do, because let me tell you what. I am a huge fan of this bourbon now. <laughs> yes. Huge. We're going we're gonna to close yes. the show out with just a little, a little titch of the bourbon. Ken, this has been great. This, I'm so, thank you so much. Well, let me um, tell you what. This is great. You have done so much for our country. You have done so much for our veterans. You've been, um, I mean, you're, you've, everybody heard the stories. This, this man, his, everything about his life is about how do I serve somebody else? Even this that we have going on is about how do I serve somebody else? And when you're doing that, the outreach that you have, you were telling the story that even today you, you texted me, you were just down the road at Specs. Um, dropping off some bottle or you know selling some bottles Tommy over there. Tommy Welch. Oh yeah, you bumped into a God. high school friend from Omaha. 
So I saw on Facebook, and I, I look at that every once in a while. I look on Facebook, and one of my old old friends from high school, he was a year younger than us, his son is looking at TCU as a college to go to. So they had a college visit. So he's here from Los Angeles, California, from L.A. So he's here. So I, I, I knew that. I saw it on Facebook, and I, you always like. You're like, okay, I'll like. You know, <laughs> you like there, whatever. So I go to the liquor store. And here I am at the liquor store, and I said, thank you to, I, you got to be this way. Like, listen, manager of liquor store or guy in charge, thank you for having this here. I'm one of the co-owners of the company. I'm one of the investors of the company. I, I thank you. Just know what we do for veterans. All the stuff that we repeated so much here, I, I talk about that and everything. And so the manager, I, I shake his hand, he leaves, and I... I always arrange, you always arrange, the, you know, make sure the dog tags, which some of them are missing. Everything's all this way. And I turn around and I'm like that. I'm like, I, I looked and stopped and Welch looked at me. And he's like, Rich, what are you doing here? I'm like, Tommy, what are you doing? Like, holy cow. He gives me a big hug and his son's there. He's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, what are you doing here? So I'm selling booze. I'm out here doing this booze thing. He goes, I can't believe this. Of all the places for us to see each other, he's from Los Angeles. And to meet in Dallas at a liquor store, holy cow. Those stories like that. And, and then, so- Yeah, 10 minutes later, you're like, I got to go to a podcast right now. <laughs> I'm seeing Dr. Ken Brown. This is great. <laughs> this is cool. But no, Ken, thank you. Thanks for well, doing this. This well, is so let's cool. Do this. this one- Oh, dude, this is a good bourbon, though. This is legit. Like, okay, so now I, now we're talking, I've had some pretty good bourbons. I've been gifted some pretty good stuff. Like when we, uh, my friend Brian Abood, uh, he actually gifted me a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle 20 year. Yeah, that's 30, something that's else. something yeah. else, yeah. And it fortunately, valuable. you know, valuable, but my deal is, that uh, we, I was fortunate enough that when we launched uh, Atron Teal, we landed a huge account. And I believe this, sharing these moments, building the memories, protecting the memories. So that's my massively transformative goal to cure dementia. At some point, before I end my career, I will cure dementia through the gut. Wow. Because I want to have this memory forever. The memories you're talking about that you that you're saying that's worth way more than a Tesla or a thing. You know the memories are important, and so sharing a really good bottle of bourbon whiskey. And you know I called Mike Logsdon up, my partner, and we met and we had a few we had a few toasts on this one because we landed a huge account and the company's moving in the right direction. There's times to sit there and do this. The, the ability to sit there and say, hey, I've got, uh, I've got the, is this a 12-year or is this a six-year? Six-year six right there. Oh, yeah, but you guys have a 12-year, don't you? We we sold out of the, t oh. the, 10, the 10, but we, we're in the process. We're, we're aging some stuff right now. It's a heavy rye. It's a 95% rye. It will be at 12 years here shortly. If you're looking for an excuse to have some friends over and say, let's celebrate our veterans, come on over and let's have, you can have this stuff neat. You can do it in the recipes that he's talking about with the old fashioned, but let me tell you what, this thing is solid. So Rich, let's do one last Got it. toast. Yes. To our veterans. To our veterans. And thank you for Can't. everything that you have done and everything that you are continuing to do. Thank you. Now, how can people, um, how can people help? Let's start with this. How can people help? So the biggest thing is is Greenlight Distribution Company, Greenlight here in Texas. They are a distribution company. So if you own or if you know a liquor store where you're at and, and, and all over the place or and bar, in Texas. They do it with like local bars? Local? local bars. Or if you're outside of Texas, I mean, you got Kentucky with RNDC. If you have, if you, hey, listen, uh, I would like to get this Soldier Valley bourbon. Um, you could buy this online, but I'd like to get this in my liquor store in Nashville, Tennessee, or I'd like to get this in my liquor store in Alabama. You know, ask for it and see if we get this on the shelf and... You know, that would be great. Um, yeah, we've got, so. Texas, we're all, we're going to be all over the place in Texas. Dude, Texas, dude, let me tell you what. Oh, God, great. So, Rich was telling me, he's like, yeah, this is, a, you know, I'm down in Texas. I'm going around. Everybody loves it. I'm like, dude, Texas loves their veterans. Texas loves a reason. 
Texas loves their spirits. So it's a perfect combination. Great. And every, even Corpus Christi, oh my God, I drove from Corpus Christi from Little Rock, Arkansas, right? In two lane roads in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like, I've been to some places before, but we go to Corpus Christi and I go out with the rep. His name is Chad with, and, and everywhere we went, the guy's like, yeah, I'd like to have cases of this, cases of that. I want it right now. It was just, it was, it was so great. It was so easy. San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, everywhere. Uh, next uh, two weeks, uh, or oh no, it's the 19th, 19th of, 19th of July, I'll be in El Paso. It's just cool going to all these places, but it's neat to see people say, yes, I'm on board. That's so great. So the bottom line is, even if you don't drink, but you have a favorite restaurant, you have a favorite bar, or you have a liquor store nearby, go in there and say, you know what? Can you please order some Soldier Valley Spirits, bourbon, rum, vodka, whiskey? It does a ton because you're going to sit there and say, I'm not even a drinker, but I know that I'm helping some veterans out. And the more that this gets out there, the more it'll grow. And this is one of those uh, tipping point moments when you can get enough momentum. A company like this can change the lives of you know, hundreds of thousands of veterans that need some help. We're not saying that we're offering liquor to them. What we're saying is guys like this go to their homes. They help modify their homes, much like Linda and the Ataxi Association, where they do real, uh, you know, on the ground stuff where they're helping people out. So that's the first thing. How can they help? Well, now you know how to help. So now I got one other question for you because we actually happen to have a lot of listeners like all over. Can you order this stuff online? Yes, you can. Um, so it's easy, but go to soldiervalleyspirits.com and there's a lot of different ways and what we can tell you um, how to get to this online. There's a there's a few different uh, vendors that sell our stuff online and yeah, that's how you how to get it. It's pretty easy. Oh, that's awesome. Well, let me tell you what. This is episode... Oh, one more thing. One more thing. I have a challenge for you. Let's I hear it. I totally forgot. We just got into it so quick. I was going to do this news report this thing just came out uh, June 17th, and so I'm challenging you to do this. A New Hampshire distill, this is real news. This is supposed to be in the beginning, but we just had fun. Like We had a great time. Going on. All right, a New Hampshire distillery unveiled a new whiskey with an unusual key ingredient. Invasive green crabs. So apparently in New Hampshire, they're having this horrible problem where invasive green crabs, which are supposed to be in Europe in a little localized area, are now just like just sort of destroying the whole ecosystem. And so a distillery went out and they harvested. It's called Tamworth Distilling. And they're using the crabs made a bourbon base steeped with a custom crab, corn, and spiced brand mixture. And the idea is it has crab on the nose for certain. And basically, we are raising awareness of the problem of an invasive species and turning it into a liquor. So, if there's an invasive species, maybe you guys can have your invasive species next spirit. This just came out on the 17th of June as a news story. I was supposed to open with that. Totally forgot about it. We were just having fun. <laughs> so, we do ours with Asian carp. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine that? So my, my buddy, uh, so the la, uh, one last story. So I got buddies of mine, oh ar- my gosh, army buddies hilarious. all over the place. And my buddy, John Soklik from Paducah, Kentucky, this is classic. So he knows who Dr. Ken Brown is because of what we, what he did during the Gulf War and everything. So we go fishing together and we, we did the ice fishing trip up in North Dakota and uh, Devil's Lake just had a great time. Uh, but the funny thing about this was, is he talked about the Asian carp that he that he fishes, and they collect all this Asian carp, and then and and the eyeballs are like below. It, it's the weirdest thing you've ever seen. And so he's like, "Yeah, I catch you." It's it's, a, it's your typical Kentucky buddy, whatever. But he's like, "Yeah, we're catching Kentucky, and, and we're touching Asian carp. You got to come down and catch some of these fish." I'm like, "I'll pass. We're cool." <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool with that. I'll catch my walleye up in North Dakota. But yeah, uh, eight, yeah, we'll do ours with Asian carp. That'd be cool. <laughs> the invasive, the invasive species. Just take invasive species. You guys will be known as the... Oh my God. As the veteran, you know, giving back invasive species, killing, you know, spirit company. 
So oh like my people God. will call you up and they'll be like, we've got a bunch of these Burmese pythons in the Florida Everglades. Can you do something with that? Yes. We will make a Burmese tequila out of these things. you imagine that? Yeah, we have an Asian carp vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like an unclean woman. Fucking... <laughs> I mean, oh my God. Can we cut that one out? <laughs> sorry. Awesome. Sorry, everybody. Joanne, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. That's oh, this episode is great. 74. Oh my God. Once again, please. Uh, we had a little bit of fun here, but this is also Rich. I've known him since I was a kid. Soldier Valley Spirits, uh, one of the most honorable men that I've ever <sighs> met. Served for 25 years. He, uh, his whole why is giving back. And these guys are giving back to our veterans, those people that need some help. And it's veterans giving back to veterans. If you're going to buy a spirit, this is definitely the one to do. And let me tell you what, on this show, my first time tasting it, my first time. And it was dope. I can just say that. Awesome. This stuff was awesome. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much for coming on, Rich. Appreciate it.